In this episode, I speak to Heather Remick about how to build a personal brand and how her view is different from the mainstream. She talks about how you can magnetize your personality into a personal brand. We discuss the need to have a personal brand, whether you run a business or work within someone else's. Heather shares how you make a personal brand and build protection for the future. Listen up to the rest of the conversation. The Maverick Paradox magazine. The Maverick Paradox magazine is for the pathologically curious. Written by a swagger of socialized mavericks who are divergent thinkers, the magazine tackles the biggest issues affecting maverick leaders today. You might be a business owner or a leader within an organization who wants to have your thinking challenged, to be exposed to a diversity of thought, or to learn from diverse experts in their fields. If so, the Maverick Paradox magazine is for you. Join the swagger at themaverickparadox.com and engage in the conversation. And today our guest is Heather Remick. How are you doing? I'm doing so well. How are you? I'm doing good, thank you. And I'm looking forward to our conversation and learning loads. Fantastic. But Heather, who are you? Okay, so um, the personal and the professional. I Professionally, I have been in the online marketing and consulting space for about eight years. Mm -hmm. Um, Mostly marketing. I have an agency and I do consulting as well. And um, I help, honestly, I support people in growing brands where they are selling their knowledge. Um, And Mm. that can go, you know, fall into a wide range of categories. Um, And I can actually tell you through my personal journey, how I came to the focus on that um, instead of e-commerce and some of the other avenues that people take. Um, so I started actually at a Fortune 500 in marketing when I was 16. I landed the job in corporate. It was a really great opportunity that I snatched up pretty young and early on and came up through the ranks of it inside of marketing and um, the corporate world. And I decided that the corporate world and the cubicles to the corner office wasn't necessarily what I wanted to do for my future. Uh, So I left corporate, resigned, um, earned degrees in psychology and biology. And for a a period of time, I was actually a medical counselor. So I worked with um, mostly women, but men and women in some of the some of the most difficult times in their lives inside of Mm. medical situations as a counselor and support. So when I decided to go back into marketing and decided to build an online brand um, and, you know, support people in this space, which I love. Part of the reason that I did that is because when I was counseling, I saw people who needed support, not able to get connected with the people that they needed. Sometimes it was location. Sometimes it was cost. There were a wide range of reasons why. Um, So part of the idea around helping people to sell their knowledge was to allow the people who needed access to experts to actually connect with experts online brilliant thank you for that you know what what strikes me is that there seems to be i don't know if it's like a thing from covid but there just seems to be so many people who are convinced that they can help someone grow a personal brand and i'm kind of curious as to how do you stand out from that what makes you special right i i think um let's see there have been a lot of personal brands that have moved online, you know, since mm. people had the opportunity to kind of reevaluate life and take a look at what they wanted. Um, and I find a lot of value in that. Building a personal brand, though, I don't think that it should just be for people who are business owners or people who are online. I do think that personal brands are for everyone. Personal brands are yeah. for people inside of corporate and organizations and professionals as well, because you never know when you're going to... Um, appreciate the opportunity that you took to elevate yourself, to create a personal brand, to create that status when it comes to looking at new opportunities in the future. So, so there is an opportunity inside of a lot of people moving, you know, into business inside of, you know, the changes we've had in the last couple of years. Um, But I do think that it's for truly everyone who's in any sort of a professional space, a personal brand can be valuable. Uh, And the way that I do it and have supported clients in doing it is probably a little bit different. It's definitely not textbook. And if I were to simplify it into one term, it's actually magnifying their personality into their brand. Um, When people begin to build their brands, what they oftentimes do is find somebody that they like 
and they emulate. So they may like them, but they may not have the same personality. And they're emulating someone who isn't necessarily a reflection of their personality. And what happens is there's an energy that people pick up on that it doesn't feel quite right. It feels a little bit like a mask. And when I'm helping people to build personal brands, what we do is take a deep look at the person and their beliefs, their burdens, their, you know, struggles, the the reason that they are who they are and um, their innate qualities and magnify those even to the point where, you know, if they're more comfortable on video, if they're more comfortable on audio, when we do that and we put them in their best light, that's when their businesses grow pretty quickly, pretty exponentially after that. You know what? I love that because I think you're right. I think everyone has a personal brand, whether you run a business or you work inside somebody else's business it's all about who you are and your reputation and what you do and I love the idea of magnifying their personality tell me more how do I magnify my personality okay so um what what we do what I do when I first start talking with a client um it's pretty easy to pick up there are some things that you know that you do well and Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have a hard time taking a look at ourselves and, you know, self-reflecting in a positive way. Um, we tend to to sometimes be our, our own worst critic. But most of us have people in our lives, personally, professionally, who have said to us, you're really good at this. Or I feel really comfortable with this with you. Or I, you know, you're my go-to for this. So there are some things that are just personality-wise um, values that we sometimes tend to negate or undervalue that we bring to the table because it comes so easily to us. We didn't have to work for it, but usually that's a starting point where we can pick up ways in which it just is naturally an easy flow for people to be of a larger impact. And then we take a look at how they communicate best. Um, So we're taking a look, like I said, you know, some people are really well-written. Some people are phenomenal in audio and can talk for a long period of time and are well-spoken. Some people are great on video and video is a great opportunity for people who learn in many different ways. It's vibrant and there's a great connection point. Um, So we take a look at that and then I generally do a brand archetype test. And what that does is it helps us to see the personality of the person. Um, Are they uh, kind of a natural born leader? Are they a a bit of a rebel? Are they that girl next door or guy next door that you can relate to really easily? Are they kind of, you know, a bit of a romantic and love like beautiful things like that? Um, are they, do they like to kind of have a bit of like an elite status, um, and kind of sit above others, not in a, not in a negative way, but kind of lead from a higher level and give, information to to others in order to grow them up to their level. There are a lot of different personalities inside of brands. And when we hone in on those, then we can help position the brand and magnify them based on who they are. Because you're a personal brand and there are a lot of things inside of business that could change. You may sell your business or stop your business and create a new one. But the person that you are, even though you'll grow over time, the person that you are doesn't change that much. Um, So there's a consistency and a trust that happens inside of building a personal brand based on who you are Mm -hmm. okay so if somebody comes along and maybe they've been in business or you know for three or four months or i don't know they've entered a new organization so they're so they might be experienced in what they do but it's a new company how do they magnify their personality how do they make a personal brand right so the first thing that i would do is decide what I choose to be known for. And generally that's that's something that you're very good at inside of business, but it's deciding what I want to be known for. If somebody was standing at the water cooler with another, you know, coworker and um the coworker said, "I am looking for someone who this." What would what would your connection point be, right? Are you, you know, very good at marketing? Are you very good at mindset? Are you very good at leadership? What is that connection point? And honing on that and then starting to publish. Honestly, a lot of it is publish and connecting with people, um, you know, looking at speaking engagement opportunities around what that is. And it can start small. It can actually start on, you know, your personal social media channels that you just start talking about some of the things that you're good at that you know, and you can go ahead and publish based on that. Just give from a place of service. It's interesting how we sometimes underestimate the natural connections that we have socially and how 
many people we know um, can connect with us in that way in a business environment, even if they aren't business you know, connections initially. Um, and, you know, how many people are willing to share our content and expand and broaden that audience. So even starting at that point is fantastic. And then we have opportunities like YouTube is a great opportunity because it gives us the opportunity to use search engines in order to find the topics that we're speaking on. So we can create video and, you know, just give quality content and teach there. We can use platforms like Twitter and Instagram and Facebook, but it's publishing our knowledge. And then it's also networking, talking about the things that we're good at, that we know, um, you know, offering support and help to others, um, seeing how we can get involved in maybe local business organizations or Facebook pages online and give our knowledge there. What that does is it builds a bit of a platform on people knowing you as being the go-to for this specific thing. And then you start getting referral opportunities. And maybe you don't have, you know, a business or consulting opportunity now, but people are talking about you and reaching out to you and your name starts circulating in the space of that knowledge that you know. Um, the more niche, the better generally. And that starts the initial base for a personal brand. And then you have an opportunity to build out a really simple landing page or website if you wanted to start building an email list and building something more. Um, but initially, even just talking about your expertise or what you want to be known for is the beginning of everything. Um, I have a uh, someone who's inside of a coaching program that I'm in. And when he first started his business, he was already successful otherwise, but he decided for a short period of time to, to do speaking engagements for free. And he spoke on one thing. It's the one thing that he wanted to be known for. And then after that point in time, that date that he stated, uh, you know, his speaking engagements were paid. But what he did in that time frame is he gave his time of service to be in the room for people interested in that one specific thing that he was speaking on. So when he when he launched his brand and really started building, you know, a platform and consulting around it, he already had an audience that was following him because he had proven himself to be a valuable source of knowledge earlier on in his speaking. Brilliant. Thank you. So that's really useful, I suppose, if you want to look for other jobs and useful to attract clients. So are you proposing then that if you want to build a personal brand, the best way of doing it is content marketing? I would say content is is an easy to access baseline for beginning, um, because you know if somebody's you know working a job and they don't have a revenue generating opportunity inside of this, they may not want to invest at a high level. Um, so publishing is a great way to do that. You know there are advantages for employers too, in order, you know, if, if, if you're employed in a company, there are still advantages to creating a personal brand there. Um, you know, they, you're increasing, increasing in status. And as your status increases, not only does the company that you work for um, see that status increase and may elevate you to another position in the same respect, you may see other opportunities come to you that wouldn't have otherwise, because you've proven your worth in throughout content marketing. So I would say content marketing and that networking are the two places that I would start as a baseline for certain. Okay. And a lot of people question whether it's actually necessary if you're actually employed. What do you think? Absolutely. Um, you know, we're not in a space anymore necessarily where we're employed through the same employer for 35 years and get a gold watch at 30 years. Uh, that's just not the space that we're in. We so some of us are, the majority of us are not. We cannot expect that our employer is going to keep us employed for our lives. We may come across an opportunity where we're surprisingly laid off and we weren't necessarily prepared for that, or you know, our company is shutting down or whatever the case may be. We'd never know what's going to happen. So the more that we can position ourselves as, as a valuable, I, I don't wanna say commodity because we're not a commodity, but as a valuable resource to other, other people in our profession as well, we're much more likely to take that network and connect with them when opportunities arise. So it's it, you are more likely to get a much better position much more quickly if you've built status and built a network around your knowledge. Okay. Well, I'm not going to um, disagree with you on that at all. Because <laughs> I think, it, you know, it is really... I think it's even more important these days 
if you're in a if you're in a role that you establish yourself as an expert in something because not only does it make you more um, marketable but it also helps you within the organization that you're in um is there any particular steps someone should take to do that Yes. So out of content, outside of content marketing, generally, I like if, if, you know, someone's kind of stepping into this and wants to invest a little time in it, it doesn't take long. But I like the idea that there's a landing page with access to the content inside of it. So instead of looking on multiple platforms to follow you, they have a home base that, you know, they can go to, like, let's say that you're doing podcasts, and you have, you know, a home base with a landing page and about section talking a little bit about you and your knowledge and then it links over to your podcast it gives people an opportunity to have you know something that feels more structured like a website to go to so they're not searching on multiple platforms so i like the idea that there's that space and you have the opportunity there to tell your story a little bit more you can do a video you can do you know a written story but just to tell your story a little bit more around kind of like i'd did very briefly where you came up through why you know you chose the expertise that you know the area of expertise that you did um you know your love for it or your passion behind it and why you feel compelled to help others you know grow their knowledge inside of the space as well or help others in connecting you know inside of your space you have a lot of opportunity around story there and story creates emotion it's a phenomenal connection point so those are the two things i would initially do if you want to grow it past that, I would take a look at speaking engagements, even small. Um, a lot of us live in cities that have business clubs and we have the opportunity to speak there, or business groups or you know, groups of professionals in general where we can step in and give great content there. That's a great place to start and build our repertoire and inside of speaking in front of others. And then we have the opportunity to expand and land bigger opportunities there. Another, if you wanted to step into this space is um, media, you know, even establish blogs to do, to be a guest blogger inside of those niche opportunities, you're reaching an audience that someone has already built inside of their platform, inside of, you know, their list and their following. And that's a great way to get eyes on you and recognition in a short period of time. Hmm. Thank you. Yeah, that's very, that's very curious. So what is the best way? I'm just sort of thinking of, because I do speak a lot about the need to stay, um, need to be seen as an expert, need to stay current. But people are very frightened of doing that when they're employed, for example, because they think that their employer is going to see all this activity and they assume they're not committed. Well, and I think that's that's where, as a person, you have the opportunity to position yourself correctly. So if you know you if you if you're giving knowledge and positioning yourself as an expert and your status increases, and you're gainfully employed by an employer who wants to keep you on and sees the value in you staying, their status increases as well. They're now employing this this person that has built a following and built recognition around their knowledge in the space. That's a very attractive quality. You know, let's say that you, you know, like I said, build a podcast or get a book deal. That looks really good for an employer to have an employee Mm -hmm. who's built that type of a brand and that type of recognition inside of their company. So it can be a status increase for an employer by an employee building a personal brand. One of the things that I would say if you're employed is to really be conscious about choosing what you're going to talk about and what you aren't and kind of stay in your lane. I would say, you know, things that are obviously like more political or something to that effect, you may want to stay outside of those spaces. Um, when it comes to building a following, I'm a big proponent of being powerful in your conversations and a little polarizing. But that said, know beforehand what the comfort level is when it comes to what you'll speak about and what you won't. But if you stay in the lane of the expertise and the knowledge that you have and just building that knowledge and you know informing people over time, there's a lot of value inside of that. Um, when we, so let's say that you're, I don't know, like a naturopathic physician, right? And you want to grow a following. Your time is spent dedicated to 
the work that you do and learning more about it over time. You're constantly on top of new opportunities inside of it and you know new tests that are coming out and new methods. Most people who have an interest in that don't have the time to dive into that like you do. So you are always going to be further ahead of, than others, even people that are studying it on you know the side because you're such your your life is ingrained inside of this. So you're always going to have an opportunity over time to give them good knowledge. So it's easy as you start publish, publishing to become an expert, not only because of the wealth of knowledge that you already have, but because you're consistently learning and you're staying on top of what's happening inside of your industry that's really attractive to others. And like I said, it's a real status increase for employers too. Okay, that's brilliant. I'm curious, building an online presence, is that the same as building a personal brand? Um, it can be. So building an online presence, it depends on what the goal of the presence is. But building a personal brand generally has to do more with a following unless you're in business. If you're in business and selling knowledge or you know, you're know you preparing for maybe doing some consulting on the side, the content marketing piece of it looks pretty similar, but then you'll also be you know, giving an opportunity for people to join your email list and having a call to action around following you more and just being more intentional around building that data that you can keep for yourself. So an online presence can be monetary. It can be in growing a following and serving. It can have a multitude of different opportunities. I like to start with the goal and work backwards. So knowing what your goal is in the future, even if it's two years from now, you want to maybe open a consulting firm or open a, you know, a coaching opportunity or business, knowing that that is coming in play, even if right now you're just starting the content and kind of getting, you know, your feet wet, take a look at what you need to do in order to build that following. Um, I would always say to start building an email list. So you have a connection point that you own with people, as well as building a following on social media. If your Facebook account goes awry or whatever may happen, you still have the ability to reach out to them via email. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. It seems so much harder though to build an email list when you can, when it's when you have the tools elsewhere to do it, like on Facebook or LinkedIn or something. Well, what I generally do is build build on Facebook and LinkedIn because that's where your connection points are. And if you give something for, for generally for free of good quality, something that your audience wants, and you request their first name and email. If they want it that badly, they're going to give it to you, especially if you're con you know, contributing to their lives and building trust with them, there won't be a big issue. If they like to follow you on social media and you're giving good quality content, they generally don't mind you being in their inbox as well. Okay, thank you. What happens if your personal brand isn't very good? How do you change it? It's not gonna be very good at the beginning <laughs> um, because we can't have an expectation that we're gonna come on strong and be perfect always. The imperfection is incredibly attractive. And I would say too, if it's not good in the beginning, keep it there, don't delete it because you're getting better. Because one of the most attractive things that we can do is keep our presence online and take a look back at what someone who's successful now looked like six years ago when they were struggling online and you know struggling to make those videos and they looked you know crazy and their audio was awful or whatever the case may be because it shows us that we can do what they've done as well. We can see that pathway that they created. It's not supposed to be perfect. It's not supposed to be phenomenal at first. You're learning and that's exactly what's supposed to happen. That said though, if you know your knowledge, right? If you're if you're talking about knowledge, you know your stuff. So even if the setup isn't phenomenal or maybe you're not as well-spoken as some of the speakers you've heard, if you're giving good quality content, you're giving it from your heart, from a place of service, people pick up on that energy. You know what, that's very encouraging because I look back at um, my early podcast episodes and the content's great, but I don't have a teaser, I don't have music, I don't, you know, and you just sort of think, oh, it's just not as good as it is now. And I, but then I think maybe in two years' time I'll be looking back now and going, it wasn't that good then. So, But I sometimes you think, you know, like you've got a great episode and you want to share it and you think, Everyone's going to think it's, this is what it's looked like now, but that was four years ago and now it's like really different. But would you suggest just sharing it anyway, unapologetically? 
Absolutely. We're, we're supposed to grow. If we're not growing, um, there's something out of mis- out of alignment because we're never supposed to stay the same. Either we're falling back or we're moving forward and hopefully we're moving forward. So showing that growth and publishing anyways is absolutely 100% what you're supposed to do. And to be mm-hmm. perfectly honest from, I mean, I'm a marketing agency owner from that standpoint, if I take two videos from a client and one is professionally done inside of a studio, edited and beautiful. And another is them walking outside, holding their cell phone, talking. There's a very good chance that that one walking with the cell phone in their hand is going to convert better. People connect with just real life things that feel a little bit more consistent with the way that they live. And that, you know, it it feels a little bit more like, grainy. Do you know what I mean? A little bit more imperfect, a little bit more personal mm-hmm. that people connect with most. So I've seen it multitude of times. Generally, the things that are a little bit more homegrown are the ones that people respond to better. Yeah, I think it's interesting is it look at the evolution because a few years ago, to be a small business, you had to pretend or look like you were massive because nobody wanted to work with you unless you looked like you had like a million people or something. But now it's kind of like it's okay to be to be small. In fact, that's quite good for a lot of clients that you are small because you're more nimble and you and you care more about getting the right result because that person, you know, ensures that you get fed in the in you know that night, you know, your children go to whatever. So you're much more invested in those individuals. Whereas only, you know, a decade ago to admit to being small would be the death knell in working for a large corporation. Absolutely. Yeah. For the larger corporations, oftentimes what they're looking for more and more is niche. So if you know your one area deeply well, and they're bringing you in for that, they're going to have trust that you, you're an expert in that space. Right. And so you don't need to be broad and wide. A lot of these bigger organizations they offer so many things. They're so broad and wide that they're not necessarily phenomenal at one, one thing, like one thing deeply. And Mm -hmm. corporations are realizing that when they bring in experts that really dive deep into a knowledge base, that they get great results in that one niche specific area. So that's why I say niching down and talking about your knowledge and continuing to grow over time and know what's happening, you know, in your space is so incredibly attractive. A lot of corporations are very attracted to that because they don't have the time and they don't have the energy to continuously learn. But if they can bring in this expert, that's always on top of things in their industry, they're taken care of and whoever brought them in looks good. Mm. And, you know, corporate organizations. So it's, it's, it's going deep and not skimming the surface, really talking about things that are a little bit higher level, but in a way that most people can understand what you're saying. Brilliant. Okay, that seems like a good place to stop. But before I do, is there anything that I should have asked you that I didn't ask you? Um, I think we pretty much handle that. I would just say overall, you know, don't wait. What we do is in in a loving way, we tend to overthink sometimes, Mm. um, you know, how to get things perfect and get it right and plan ahead. Uh, one of the strategies that I use with clients is I'll take a really a spreadsheet, but you can even do it on a piece of paper and write down the areas of knowledge that you know really well, your beliefs inside of it and inside of the industry and the burdens that you and the people inside of your industry have. And if you just kind of brainstorm and list those out, that's going to be a good amount of content for at least a few months. So I would say to start with that so that you have kind of some ideas for content in your back pocket so you can be consistent with it and consistently show up for your audience that consistency builds trust like nothing else brilliant I like that that's great thank you so much for coming on the show Heather well thank you for having me I appreciate it Judith no, it's great. And thank you out there for tuning into the Maverick Paradox podcast. I hope you've enjoyed listening to my conversation with Heather as much as I enjoyed having it. The Maverick Paradox. Judith Germain is an author, speaker, consultant, mentor and trainer and the leading authority on Maverick leadership. She is the founder of the Maverick Paradox, which supports organizations to enhance their leadership capabilities and to help business owners develop and grow their businesses.
Judith enables individuals, business owners, and organizations to improve their impact and influence. She is also HR Zone's leadership columnist, an international online radio host, and her expert opinion has appeared in national, international, and trade press. Thank you.